Southern Africa, home of many wild animals. Whether small or big, the young animals are especially in need of human help. And when the young ones are strong enough, the animal rescuers help them to settle back into the wild. In this episode of Raising Wildlife, Kylie must find Major to ensure he's ready to be released back into the wild. Ruth is concerned Rocky has not been eating. This means he might not be released. Rachel's 16-year commitment to her gentle giant changed her life. We start in KwaZulu-Natal, a coastal province in South Africa. Also known for its beaches, mountains and vast wildlife. Crow, a rehabilitation centre focused on rehabilitating and releasing wildlife back into the wild, like this grey dacre major. His caretaker Kylie has overseen his rehabilitation. I'm Kylie Hawkins, I'm a junior clinic nurse here at Crow. At Crow our mission is to help injured and orphaned wildlife, get them into a rehab programme and eventually see them back into the wild where they belong. Right, so we're here at the baby antelope enclosure. I'm here to check on my grey diker major. He's ready for release tomorrow, so I just want to make sure everything's still all right with him and that'll be good to go. Finding major is going to be a challenge because grey dikers are prone to hiding. However, major's keen sense already alerts him to Kylie's presence. The tall grass found in his natural habitat provides major with a perfect hideout, which is essential in the wild. Okay, so it's, it's very important that I do find him because um, I want to make sure that everything is still 100% for tomorrow and that we can actually go ahead with the whole, with the whole release. I don't seem to be very lucky with it today. Major is naturally equipped to elude potential predators and Kylie knows it. She needs to see that he's physically ready for release. In preparation for his uh, release tomorrow, it's always vital to consider um, what can go wrong. When catching any kind of wild animal, obviously there's risks involved. It's, uh, it can actually become quite a life and death situation. Ah, the, oh, there he is. Over there. So Major is a grey diker, also known as a common diker. The grey diker is the most popular species throughout Africa. So Major came to us when he was about two weeks old. A member of public found him caught in a fence and was actually upside down. And they treated him for an infection and for, they gave him some good pay meds. And yeah, he's done, he's done very well since. <laughs> Kylie must consider the worst case scenario for the capture and release of Major. What I'm worried about is obviously him injuring himself and um, obviously we're dealing with a prey species and naturally they are a lot more um, prone to obviously run away. Major can adapt to a variety of habitats, increasing his chance of survival. So ideally we would like to catch early in the morning when it's nice and cool, or if it's an overcast day, it'll work in our advantage. Major is ready for release. Kylie is concerned, however, about the humidity common to KwaZulu-Natal this time of year. Later, Major resists walking into the release box unassisted. This could jeopardize his release. Now to Bay World in Port Elizabeth, a city in South Africa's Eastern Cape province. Port Elizabeth is one of the largest seaports in South Africa. Bay World is the only sanctuary in the region that cares for sea life in need. Rocky, a new hatchling, is a problem feeder. His weight has not been consistent, and Ruth needs to resolve this if Rocky is to be released. Hi, my name is Ruth Wright. I'm a curator at Baywold Oceanarium in Port Elizabeth in the Eastern Cape in South Africa. Now, we rehabilitate a lot of marine animals here, but today what we're going to be sharing with you is loggerhead 
turtles and also we've got a green turtle in store for you. Rocky, a loggerhead hatchling, was found stranded on the beach, a common occurrence with hatchlings. This little chap here, his name is Rocky. Rocky was found in time before dehydration set in, but he had already suffered a serious injury. Now, the reason why this little chap is still with us is because his rehabilitation still needs to continue. Rocky only has three flippers. The lack of a fourth may have been caused by a genetic setback or from an attack. But the vet is not happy with this little chap and says he's not ready to go back into the ocean yet. Rocky's weight fluctuates from week to week, and at his age, this is not a good sign for Ruth. Now we've got some lovely food here that we're going to be trying to feed him today. Some days he eats very well, and other days he doesn't eat so well. So let's hope today is a good eating day. And then we're hoping that we can release him. Obtaining enough nutrients is vital for Rocky's early development and thus his survival in the ocean. Rocky's release is dependent on whether his growth is on the increase or not. Later, Rocky's weekly medical examination will provide factual information about his weight. Before then, we meet another patient, Pepper. She suffered a shark bite. Let's return to Crow in KwaZulu-Natal. This subtropical region is humid, especially during summer season. The region's rich biodiversity and efforts at conservation are well documented. Crow is the most sought-after rehabilitation center in the area. Major is a benefactor of that care. Another bushbuck, Brave, needs Kylie's attention. Brave has a serious leg injury and his movement must be restricted. One of the reasons why I'm so passionate about working here at Crow is because we get to help wildlife that's either been injured or orphaned, normally due to human inter intervention. And we get, we're able to give them that second chance, which they otherwise wouldn't have. We as humans, we encroach more and more on their land, and it's, yeah, it's unfortunate that they get the short end of the stick. But I'm happy to at least be able to give these animals a second chance, ho hopefully get them back into the wild where they belong. And yeah, it's a great feeling. Kylie is on the way to attend to a bushbuck called Brave. She constantly monitors all her tiny patients. Brave is housed in this small enclosure because he has a broken hind leg. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just uh, providing little bushbuck with something to eat. Uh, bushbuck are predominantly browsers. She's got some nice figs for this afternoon. The foliage given to Brave serves two purposes. Firstly, for nutritional value, and secondly, and as important, the foliage provides a sense of security for Brave. He would naturally use it as camouflage in the wild. So the reason this little bushbuck is currently in this little hut is to restrict her movement and allow that fracture of her leg to heal nicely. Uh, we need that bone to calcify nice and hard if she's ever going to want to survive in the wild. Any sudden movement from Kylie could cause Brave to be startled. He could run away and further injure his broken leg. There is nothing more soothing for a young bushbuck like Brave than to have the comfort of fresh milk. So this fracture isn't um, a blunt force trauma, or wasn't caused by a blunt force trauma. Um, the vets, they suspect that it was caused by a twisting of her leg that caused the bone to actually fracture in a number of different ways. Um, so instead of it being a clean fracture or a clean break, it's an accumulation of smaller fractures. So basically what the vets had to do was they actually had to put a very tight bandage around the leg to bring those fragments of bone together again so that they can calcify. Brave's treatment and rehabilitation will take some time due to the nature of his injury. But he too will have the opportunity to return to the wild one day where he belongs. Back to Major. But will he play along and avoid the hot conditions during his transit? Back to Bayworld now in Port Elizabeth, a town situated at the end of the picturesque garden route. Port Elizabeth is also known for year-round whale watching. Bayworld is the only centre for injured sea life, like this green turtle. His name is Pepper, and she's a juvenile green turtle and she came into us in October last year 
um, with what we believe is a shark bite. And so this is quite a long rehab. It's already been about six months of rehab. It's going to continue on. And every week, our kind vet, Dr. Mackay, comes in to look at the wound and clean out the wound. So, yeah, so we're very happy with the progress. This lesion is probably about half the size it was initially introduced. And what we're really waiting for it to do now is just to seal up from the sides. Um, and the big emphasis in the meantime is just to control any infection in that open part of the wound. We prefer not to close these lesions up because you get infection underneath the shell if you do that. So we treat them as open wounds. If an infection sets in, it will push out Pepper's rehabilitation process further. You'll see as I flush the tiny little insects come out of the wound, they nature's natural cleaners of the wound. This is not the only kind of wound that turtles get. This is obviously a natural wound, but there is a huge problem with propeller, boat propellers, and they can also get stuck in fishing nets entangled, which almost as they grow, the fishing net just constricts the limb. We call the paper because green turtles at this size actually change over to largely a vegetarian diet. And the first thing she ate was a green pepper. So hence, the, our green turtle is named Pepper. Okay, I think that's all we need to do today. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna put her back in the water now. At the moment, she's in quite a small pool, as you notice. Um, this is just because we have to handle her and monitor her feeding and the health of the wound daily. Once the wound heals up and gets clear of infection, we will actually take her outside into a large pool and she'll be out in the sunlight. So it's just now while we're doing the treatments. Pepper's rehabilitation is going according to plan. After all, she survived a shark attack. Now let's go to Mafui Primate Sanctuary, nestled in the jungles of Central Africa and Cameroon. Here at Mafui, you will find the gentle giants of Africa. Silverback gorillas are ground-dwelling, predominantly herbivores that inhabit the tropical forests of Cameroon. They are the largest living primates in the world. However, the region is well known for the hardships gorillas face here. Silverbacks find sanctuary here at Mafui after experiencing terrible circumstances. It takes a certain type of caretaker to provide this care. My name is Rachel Hogan and I'm the director of Apaction Africa. We're based here in Mefu Park, which is a forest area in Cameroon. The main aim of our project is to rescue and rehabilitate the primates. We house up to 350 different species of primates here out at the sanctuary. Rachel's life changed when she arrived here. This silverback gorilla named Khan Daniel had the greatest impact on Rachel when he arrived as a distressed week old baby. So I originally came out to Cameroon 16 years ago um, for three months to volunteer. That's when the sanctuary received news about a week old gorilla that had been rescued. Khan Daniel would be the youngest gorilla entering the sanctuary at the time. I offered to help look after him and to stay as long as I needed to stay. And that was when I met Khan Daniel. Rachel was nervous as a young volunteer holding a traumatized baby Khan Daniel. He was uncontrollable, kicking and screaming. Rachel didn't know what to do. And then all of a sudden something just clicked and I placed him on me. Rachel held Khan Daniel against her chest like a gorilla mother would and then his hands and feet clamped onto her, a sign of acceptance. And I'd never felt so much love either in my life the day that he arrived. Khan Daniel had stirred up something in Rachel which led her to stay. Rachel's life would be changed forever. And 16 years on, here he is now. Beautiful silverback, family, head of the family to all of this gorilla group. Khan Daniel, like all gorillas, is emotionally fragile. He is a gentle giant of the Cameroon forests. Like his family members, they're all very sensitive, but have the stigma of being dangerous and aggressive. But then what Khan Daniel did 
was he opened my eyes up to what was actually going on in, in Cameroon. And that was when I was re I realised there were more individuals like Khan Daniel. So it didn't just become about one, it became about every other orphan that came in. And I always remember the day that he arrived, once I placed him on him, I made a promise that I would not leave Cameroon until I got him in the forest with his family group. And I did that, and it took me several years. But in between those years, I made the same promise to every single other orphan that came in, which is why 16 years later, I'm still here. It must stand to reason why the bond between Rachel and Khan Daniel is special. Let's return to Crow on the east coast of South Africa. It is Major's big day. It's time for his release. A little persuasion might be needed to get Major into his release box. Kylie and her assistant, Andrew, have arrived to start with the capture. All right, Andrew. Okay, let's get the box ready for the capture. I'm just still a little bit concerned about the heat. It's a lot later in the day than I was hoping for. But yeah, let's, let's see if we can do this nice and, nice and swiftly. All right, so let's put the box on the right-hand side of the hut over there. The idea is that he's gonna walk in behind the hut on the left, come around the corner, and we'll gently just encourage him into the box like that. So as quick and stress-free as possible. The preparations are almost done. There is one more task to be completed before the capture begins. What I'm gonna do now, so I'm just gonna prep the box for Major's release. Um, so I'm just gonna put some leaves in there. It's gonna make it feel a bit more, more secure for him when he enters the box. And what I've done now is I've just put some water on it because as you can see, it's gonna be a bit of a hot day today. And I just want to make sure he's got a little bit of moisture if he gets thirsty. It'll also help cool him down. That's some nice branches for Major. Keep him nice and cool while he's in transit. Kylie needs to gently persuade Major into the box. Easy boy. She does not want to startle him. Yeah, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to try and keep him as calm as possible. And we're just going to try and gently nudge him into the direction of the hut. Looks like Major is calm and ready to go in. Andrew stands ready so Major doesn't escape around the back. There he goes. Slowly does it. Wait, did something startle him? This is not good. Time is running out. Kylie blocks his way. It worked. Okay. Will he go into the release box by himself? He's on his way. He's turning. Kylie follows, making sure Major climbs into the box. Otherwise, she'll have to call off the release for today. A few more steps. Luckily, Kylie is following Major in. He must get in now or else. <sighs> Got up. That was close. Now, Kylie must get on the road as soon as possible. Easy boy. Back to Port Elizabeth, where another release hangs in the balance. With a wide coastal beach line, sea life requires help every day from Bayworld. If Rocky has not gained weight, he will not be released this week. Okay, so here's the laboratory where we do quite a bit of research on the turtle hatchlings. And what we're gonna be do, doing today is weighing and sizing the two hatchlings just to see how their progress is, if they've grown, put on any weight, and if there's any need for concern. We normally do this weekly because these little guys will go downhill very fast. So we have to keep a good um, handle on what's happening and just keep monitoring them. Let's see what Rocky's done between last week and this week. Now Rocky is our problem feeder. So we're going to, his weight is very important for us to learn. Okay, so unfortunately last week he weighed 211 grams and this week he weighs only 210 grams. Not good news for Rocky. His release is in jeopardy. Normally what we'll do is contact the vet 
and move forward with a different feeding plan, more nutritious food that will feed. Or um, he has been in the past on antibiotics and he's also been on an appetite stimulator where we had to inject him every few days just to try and stimulate the feeding and the appetite. So it looks like we'll probably be putting him back onto a more nutritious diet with more prawn and more mackerel and seeing what we can move further from there. Um, we'll be contacting the vet as well also for a feeding plan. So let's just check his width and length of the shell. Okay, so that's 95, which has stayed the same. And the width, 86, also stayed constant. Okay, and the curved length. Constant. Turtle hatchlings are vulnerable at this age, and Ruth knows how important these results are, and no detail is left unchecked. 104. Okay. So unfortunately, the way it stands at the moment is we need to contact the vet and then put him onto a different feeding plan and try again to get him feeding better. As you can see, rehabilitation is quite a long process and um, we, we have positives and then we have negatives, we have a setback and then suddenly he'll grow a lot. Um, if I look back, because we do have records from every week, he put on a large amount of weight the previous week and now he seems to have stayed constant. So it's a game where we're sometimes winning, sometimes losing, but we have to just keep on trying because we want to get him released at the end of the day. That's why we're here. So hopefully, Rocky, next week will be your week. If Rocky's condition improves, perhaps he will be released back into the ocean. For now, though, he will remain at Bay World for further treatment. Let's travel back up the coast to KwaZulu-Natal for the last time. Unfortunately, it is approaching midday and the temperatures are increasing. Traveling at this time could be dangerous for Major. So basically, the hardest part of the whole procedure now is over. The actual capture and putting him into the box and getting him, uh, getting him into the car for transport. So now basically, all we have to do is get him there nice and safely. The area where he's going to, it's a very, very safe location. Uh, the owner's camera traps will actually be able to monitor his progress as well and yeah, we'll be able to see, see how he goes along while in his natural environment. A new safe home awaits Major. So we've reached the destination. It's a lovely day for a release. So in front of us is Dr. Ryan Van Eden. Um, he's assisting me with the release today. All right, good in yourself. He's great. Uh, the capture went so great this morning, and yeah, I'm really happy. Good news. I think we've got a lovely little spot there in the shade mm. where we can get him out. A bit of short grass, a bit of long grass, yeah. lots of water. I think it's going to be good. He's going to be feel a bit more secure there amongst the, amongst the trees. He's a heavy boy. It is almost time for Major's release into his new environment. Kylie wants to ensure the door is facing the right way. So when the door is opened and Major makes a run for it, he runs in the right direction. Great stuff. All right, we ready for the release? This is what it's all about. He might be a little bit, um, a little bit shy. 
completely new environment for him. It's all right, boy. That's what it's all about, eh? It's a, it's a really great moment to see them actually go off, go off like this. Major is free, returned safely back into the wild. Kylie knows Major will survive. Everything went extremely smoothly. I was a bit worried about the weather at one point, but yeah, he's been great. He's been nice and calm, and I really couldn't have asked for a better day.